my goodness, I know nothing about lighting and filming, so I think this is good lighting, whatever, we're gonna roll with this. Okay, so how's it going? Welcome, welcome back to a brand new video. Today we are going to be making a litmus solution. Now, for testing for acids and bases in solutions, right? So, if you've ever taken any science class in school, really, you'll know that you've probably used litmus paper before. It's just a piece of paper that you can stick into a uh, solution, and if it turns red, if, if blue litmus tape paper turns red, then you know that there is an acid pres present, but if red litmus paper turns blue, you know there's a base present, yada yada. So anyway, that's what we're doing today. So, now how I'm going to be doing this is actually using materials from the Chem C3000. We have uh, this, which is a bottle designed for storing litmus solution with this nifty little cap here, right? So that's the first thing we're going we're to need. Put that right there. We're also going to need some... Uh, test tubes because, I mean, you really can't have a chemistry tutorial without test tubes, am I right? Now this box contains a lot of the chemicals that I own. There you go. I know it's for tools and all that, but who cares, right? So if we open this up, this contains all the chemicals from the C3000 and uh, a lot more on the bottom. It's not very organized. It's not ideal because if one of those spills and reacts with all the other chemicals and we, we've got ourselves a plastic bomb. So, uh... That's that. What we want is what's called litmus powder. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a solution of this litmus uh, stuff. And uh, we can use it to test for acids and bases. Let's uh, start the chemistry. So this is really easy to make. Um, for my first video here in a while, I... Uh, I want to do something super basic, I didn't want to go too crazy, because, you know, it's been a while since I made one of these, and uh, we might as well start off nice and easy, right? So this is super easy, a five-year-old could do this. All you gotta do is uh, grab some water, I'm using distilled water, because everybody knows that you can't use water from the tap, otherwise you're gonna have problems later on. But uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to take a funnel and stick it into one of these beakers. And uh, you know, before we do that, the tutorial I saw said to use, get this, three centimeters of water. And I'm thinking, what do you mean three, do you mean three cubic centimeters? I don't know what they were thinking, but obviously you don't measure liquids in centimeters, okay? That's just wrong. That's just wrong morally. You should be ashamed of yourself. So, uh, yeah. So they said three centimeters of water. I don't know what the heck they're talking about. So I'm just gonna guess, all right? We've got our uh, litmus powder on here. We gotta use one of those fancy openers that was included with the Chem C3000 for that. And our measuring spoon. And I think that's it. So, uh, I guess I'm gonna crack this gallon of distilled water open. Let's throw that over there. That's not really needed. And uh, we're gonna pour in some distilled water into this test tube right here. Now again, I am literally guessing, I've got no idea what I'm doing, because again, tutorial said to, me to measure in centimeters, which uh, is not how you measure water, but whatever. So, there is our, there is our water. Now, I'm gonna zoom in so you can actually tell what the heck we're doing here. So in this test tube, we have uh, some distilled water. Now, all we gotta do is add three spoonfuls of this litmus solution. So I'm gonna crack this open, here we go. Here's our litmus powder. And uh, it says to take three spoonfuls of this. So there's one, put that in. There's one. That should go in and dissolve into the solution, and you know what? That actually might be enough. Did they, again, they did not specify, but if you're, if you're gonna make a tutorial, if you're gonna make a chemistry tutorial, you gotta specify what you're measuring, right? You can't just say, oh, mix this with this, unless you're just doing it for proof of concept, I guess. So uh, we're, gonna, we're just gonna throw in some powder here, and now we've got, uh, we've got this bad boy, which is the litmus solution. I do not know the solubility of this in water, but heck, we're gonna, we're just gonna go with it. Now we're gonna mix it in with this glass stirring rod, just like so. And I might need to add more water because I do feel some solids still left in there. So we're gonna we're gonna add more water, just a little bit. 
Whoa, okay, that could have been bad. You don't want to overshoot it. And, uh, yeah, that actually looks pretty good. Now, if you're a smart human being, you will add denatured alcohol to this solution to improve the shelf life. Uh, but we're not smart human beings, right? So we're just gonna, we're just gonna roll with that. Now we have this, which looks, looks to me like it's mostly dissolved. So we're just gonna go with it. So now the next step is to put it into this, this bottle here, which is gonna store our litmus solution. Add this funnel. And we're gonna put the solution into there, just like so. Oh wow, that thing's full. Okay. Well, we've got a uh, full container of litmus solution. Now, how the heck does this lid work? There we go. Okay. This is what I needed. So this is what the inside of the bottle looks like, right? You can actually just pour this in so drop by drop is really nice. All right, I can't find my uh, vinegar, so you know what? We're just gonna use citric acid, which is an acid, of course. And so what we will do is, first of all, actually, yeah, whatever. I'm just gonna use a smaller funnel, which will work just fine. It will transfer, trans, transfer some water into here, just like so. And that's a little too much. So we can actually transfer this to another test tube. Ah. All right, and to this first test tube, I am going to add some citric acid. Citric acid, of course, is that uh, is one of the sour acids that you can find in a lot of fruits. So, like oranges, for instance, have citric acid in them, and uh, that's part of the reason why it gives you that sour flavor. It's also added to a lot of other candies and stuff too. I'm sure if you ever had a one of those sour warheads or whatever they're called, I don't know. Um, it'll be sour on the outside, and that's due to citric acid. So, now that we have our acid solution, we're gonna make a basic solution. So that we're gonna use sodium bicarbonate, otherwise known as baking soda. So to this second beaker, we are going to simply just add a few spoonfuls of baking soda. Now I'm not really measuring perfectly here, I don't really care. I just need some baking soda dissolved in some water. All right, there we go. So this is our basic solution, and this is our acidic solution. And now, if we take our litmus solution, we can observe what happens when we add it to uh, the different test tubes. So here we go, first is our acid solution. All right, all right. I don't know how to get this stuff out. <laughs> um, yeah, so, huh. Oh, I guess that's how you do it. Okay, well, I have some uh, drop of litmus solution in this pipette. There we go. I guess you just use a pipette. And now, we can add uh, this litmus solution to this acidic solution. And uh, there you go. Swirl that around a little bit. And because there's an acid present, it turns red. All right, gonna add the rest of this to here, just to make sure we have enough. Mix it around a little bit, wouldn't hurt. And there you go, a red solution. Now, there we go, I figured out how to use this bottle. So, so now, if I add some lima solution to this, simply tipping this over, drop by drop, we can see it turns blue. And that's, of course, because we have a basic solution. If there was an acid, it would turn red. It's basic, it's blue. So there you go. Now you might be thinking, well, the litmus solution is already blue, isn't it? So uh, if you add it to a base, how do you know if it's a base? Because it's gonna be blue, so when you add to the solution, it's gonna be blue either way, right? Well, and this is pure distilled water from uh, Walmart, of course. And you can see that when I add it to here, it stays basically clear. It has a little bit of a blue tinge, but it basically stays clear. So here's the difference between my baking soda, sodium bicarbonate solution, and pure distilled water. And you can tell that this is way more blue than this. So 
Just a bit of a clarification, just in case you're a bit skeptical about that, so uh, hopefully that helps. Let me mix them together. Of course, there is a reaction here because, of course, adding a base to an acid or an acid to a base, they'll try to neutralize each other and give off carbon dioxide. So, that's what's happening here. And, if I touch the outside, it's cold. And that's because the reaction is uh, endothermic, so it absorbs heat. And there you go. So now, so now you, you should know how to make a uh, litmus solution. Hopefully you, hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, it went decently well. <laughs> These bottles are quite a pain to learn how to use, but hope you enjoyed this video. It's a bit of a simpler video again, because, uh, you know, I want to start off nice and easy here before getting to some, some dangerous chemistry, so... There you go. You can use that in, uh, in uh, more videos to determine if it's an acid or a base. Hopefully you enjoyed, and uh, until next time, have a good day, and I'll see you later.